Hi everyone. This incident happened about five years ago. This is a story that I never really tell anymore, because most people are either uncomfortable hearing it or make well-meaning comments about what I should have done in this situation without really understanding how differently your mind works when you're experiencing absolute panic. But you guys seem to get it. So, here's my story. I was living in a relatively nice apartment in downtown Memphis working as an ophthalmic technician. I arrived home from work at my usual time, around 4.30 p.m., unlocked my door, and went inside. I set my phone, wallet, and keys on the kitchen island, hearing my heavy metal front door swing shut loudly behind me, and began taking care of some errands around the house. Having grown up in a small town, it was a habit for me to not lock my door during the day, especially when I knew my husband would be home soon anyway. I've never forgotten to lock my door once in the five years since this day. I walked through my bathroom and into my large walk-in closet and began hanging up the laundry that I'd started earlier in the day before work. My front door opened, and I smiled with surprise. My husband was home a little early, and I happily called out to him, I'm in here, love. I was met with silence, and slowly began to feel that sinking feeling of, something is wrong, crawl up my spine. I tried to shake it off, thinking my husband simply hadn't heard me, and walked out into my living room slash kitchen area. Standing on the other side of my kitchen island was a complete stranger. He was male, older than me, I would estimate 50s, but it's hard for me to recall exact facial features or details from this moment, and was just standing there, staring at me. No ski mask, no weapon, just watching me. I wondered if he'd maybe walked into the wrong apartment and was going to apologize and leave, but as he continued to stare, I realized I needed to do something other than just gape at this stranger in my house. I stood taller puffed up my chest in an attempt to look more threatening, which is hard to do as a small female, and used a loud, clear voice, telling him to get out of my apartment, that he had no business being here. He completely ignored me, like I hadn't spoken. Then he began to pick up my things. My cell phone, my keys, my wallet, he picked them up methodically and put them into his own pockets. That's when it truly hit me that this person was dangerous. I was naive enough to believe this was all a mistake until that moment. I darted forward toward the only other device I had that would allow me to get help, my computer. I had to take a few steps closer to the intruder in order to reach it, but still had about 12 to 15 feet between us, so I knew I could grab it and run before he could reach me. As I picked it up and turned to run, I saw him start to move after me, and I sprinted back toward the bathroom because it was the only place I could go and put two locked doors between us, my bathroom door and the closest door. I slammed and locked the first door and within seconds I could hear him messing with it, trying to open it. I ran into the closet and locked that door too, opening my computer and getting on Facebook Messenger to contact my husband. I sent message after message, pleading with him to call 911 and tell them there was an intruder in the apartment. He got the messages within minutes and assured me that he had a dispatcher on the phone, and was leaving work himself to try and get to me if he could. I waited. And waited. The bathroom door opened, and the intruder came inside. He moved to the closet door and started trying to break that door down, too. Here's the part where people usually start giving me advice on how I should have acted, but all I can tell you is that I was frozen. With fear, with shock, I don't know. But I didn't scream, or cry, or search for a weapon in that dark closet. I didn't brace the door or try to hold it closed. I just kneeled in my closet, and waited to die, because I just knew that's what was going to happen. People like to tell me that I lived in an apartment. Surely if I'd screamed someone would have heard and come to help. Surely there was something heavy enough in my closet to use to defend myself. Hell, even the laptop I had would hurt if I swung it at someone. Why didn't I do anything? I don't really have an answer for that. But the closet door, miraculously, held. I heard frustrated footsteps go back out into the living area of my apartment. I heard things breaking, bottles shattering, my drawers and refrigerator and cabinets being flung open as things were torn out of them. I continued to sit in that closet, silently crying, wanting to leave but feeling that death was inevitable. I felt awful about my selfishness at that moment, but I messaged my mom, who lived a 15 hours drive away, and told her what was happening. I desperately wanted comfort, and to tell her how much I love her. I'm not a parent, but I can only imagine the fear and helplessness I put her through knowing her daughter was in danger and there was nothing she could do to help. She messaged me constantly, begging me to keep replying. I told her I would as long as I could, but I also told her to tell my brothers I loved them. 
to help my husband through whatever happened next if it ended badly for me. The intruder started messing with the closet door again, mumbling disjointed words that I couldn't really distinguish. I remember hoping that the police would get to the apartment before my husband, that he wouldn't be the one to find me in whatever state this invader left me in. The front door opened again, and it was my husband, shouting for me. The intruder walked out toward the living room slash kitchen area again, where my front door was located, and I opened the door and darted from the closet to find my husband on the ground with him, pinning him in place. The man kept mumbling, at times yelling, but never really put up much resistance. This entire part is a blur for me, I remember feeling like the room was spinning, filled with fear mostly for my husband at this point. Eventually the police found the apartment. It took them about 25 minutes to arrive, which still blows my mind, I know time seems to move slowly during scary situations so I thought it was less than that, but from the time my husband dialed 911 to the time officers arrived, it was 25 excruciating minutes. This isn't intended to bash them in any way, it just always seemed like this was an unusually long response time for a home invasion. They got my things back from the man, and took him out of my apartment. I numbly went through the process of filing a police report, telling them what happened. One of the officers commented that I should really keep my door locked at all times. I remember feeling like he was being insensitive at the time, or blaming me for what happened, but later recognized his words were coming from experience. I'm sure he's seen this situation and differently for other women. Within 30 minutes, the scariest incident of my life was over, but I've carried the fear, the violation, the anxiety of having someone intrude into my space for years. If it happened to me once, it could happen again. If you've made it this far, thanks for listening. Please consider continuing, because this isn't all doom and gloom. If this or something similar has happened to you, and you're still struggling with the aftermath of it, the sleepless nights, the lying awake listening for sounds of forced entry, the nightmares, the constant checking and rechecking your locks, this is what eventually helped me. A year after this took place, my husband and I moved to the Midwest for his job. We selected a safe town, with a nice apartment complex, and chose a third floor apartment with only one point of entry. I looked up every statistic on crime for the neighborhood, finding that an isolated incidence of car theft was the only thing reported in decades. I still couldn't sleep at night. It was definitely better than staying in the same apartment in Memphis, but my husband often works night shifts now, and I simply couldn't continue being terrified to sleep at night. I realized my biggest fear wasn't that something could happen again, but that if it did, I was just as unprepared now as I was then. I hadn't changed anything, other than locking my door, and I knew I would likely freeze up again, and leave my life up to being able to hide well enough, or having a door hold long enough to save me, and that was unacceptable. I walked into a martial arts school with an excellent self-defense program, introduced myself, and started taking classes. At first I was quiet, hiding in the back of the room and generally keeping to myself. My instructor, who was both incredibly kind and incredibly insightful, slowly built up my confidence and brought me out of my bubble of fear. After several months of training, I finally shared my reason for taking classes with him, and he's worked with me tirelessly to give me the ability to protect myself in any environment. I've been training for years now, and the difference it has made in every aspect of my life is unbelievable. The meek, quiet girl that waited to die in her closet doesn't exist. I'm confident, I'm strong, I'm worthy of living and protecting myself in my home. I no longer am ashamed of how I handled the situation I was in, but I also understand what steps I can take to ensure that I'm safe. It wasn't easy, and it didn't happen overnight, but it was worth it. I recognize this might not be a solution or option for everyone. Your experience is valid, and however you decide to cope with your own story is the right choice for you. This is how I happen to do it, and it's worked well for me. Thank you again for listening. I'm a little afraid to share this because I'm not sure how people will respond, but maybe doing so will help someone else that's feeling alone with this. If anyone is struggling with their own story and wants a kind ear to listen to, I'm here. Stay safe out there. This is the scariest thing that has ever happened to me, and what makes it worse is that had things gone down differently I might not have been here to tell the story. Okay, first things first. I'm a girl, about 5 feet 7 inches, and around 130 pounds. This happened to me about three years ago, when I was in my early 20s and still a student, living in a very safe area. Growing up, I had loved martial arts, and having grown up in a small rural town, 
I'd take what I could get. Karate? Fine. Judo? Sure. Kung Fu? Why not? Taekwondo? Sign me up. I loved martial arts, I still do, because they helped me discipline my body and mind, and grow my confidence. It had been a few years since I moved out to my country's capital to study, and I had kind of fallen off the martial arts wagon at that point, with college taking up most of my time. I should also mention that at the time I lived with my younger brother in Arquette. We lived on the first floor, the second floor, for all my American people, right next to a military camp and a patch of forest which leads to a creek. On our back balcony, there was a circular metal ladder that would lead up to our balcony, and the kitchen door, which, of course, we always kept under lock and key. Except for when the cat wanted to go out, when we'd unlock the door and he would go down the outdoor metal stairs to find his cat friends and play. I commuted to my college every day by walking 30 minutes to a bus stop, then riding the bus for an hour, and then walking another 10 minutes until I made it to campus. And when it was time to go home, I'd have to do the same thing all over again, so as you can imagine, it was very tiring. I would be out of the house every day from 10 in the morning until almost 10 at night, so when I'd come home I'd be knackered. I don't believe in premonitions much, but I do believe in instinct, and for quite a while, I felt like something was up with that patch of forest behind our apartment. I felt watched. Maybe it was the blackness of that patch of forest that made me feel uneasy, because there wasn't a single light there, and the outdoor ladder looked like it descended into an abyss. You could take three steps into that patch of forest and you'd be under complete cover of darkness. It made me feel weird, because even though I couldn't see anything, I knew that something was up. I had no proof, but I knew it. I was in class one Wednesday afternoon with my best friend at the time, and a professor came in to pitch an internship to us. Internships aren't very well known in my country, so professors actually have to argue their case about why, as students, we could benefit from this. My best friend, I'll call her Kay, was very interested, but when the professor listed off the requirements, she realized she couldn't apply, as her GPA wasn't high enough. This led to Kay having a crying fit after the class was over which lead to a panic attack, and it got so bad that she called her boyfriend to come pick her up from campus, and since I didn't want to leave her alone, I stayed with her until her boyfriend showed up and got in his car with her. The conversation in the car was basically me and her boyfriend trying to console her and help cheer her up. I asked her if she'd like me to go over to her place so we could all hang, but she said that she was okay, and didn't want to put me through the hassle of commuting home the next day, she lives a full hour away by car so two hours away by public transport, so it was decided that they would drop me off to my house and they'd go to theirs. We get to my house around 19.00, a full three hours before I normally come home. I hug her, tell her to text me if she needs anything, I thank her boyfriend, and get out of the car, glad that I'll be home early for a change. I went in through the main entrance, climbed up the stairs to the first floor, and put my key in the lock. I opened the door and called out my brother's name like I always did, and got no response. The house was dark except for one light in the room where the front door opened into, and eerily quiet. But I felt my stomach tie into a knot, because even if I couldn't hear anything, I could feel that someone was there. And when my instinct talks, I listen. I turned right, into the hallway that leads into our rooms, and I saw my brother's door slam shut hard as soon as I got in the hallway. My brother's room is on the end of the hallway on the left facing my own room, which is on the right of the hallway. My first thought was that my brother had taken a shower and forgotten to get a towel so he made a run for it from the bathroom, which is next to my room, in embarrassment. But then I heard muffled whispers coming from his room, sounded hushed, and pressing. I still had no reason to be afraid, but I was on high alert, because I thought my brother and his friends were planning on jumping out of his room and scaring me, and I wasn't about to let them get the satisfaction. So I inched down the short hallway through the darkness, and before I knock on my brother's door, I take a look at my room. It was a fucking mess. My mattress was off my bed, my clothes and my books were all over the floor, my jewelry box was empty and thrown on my bed, all in all it looked like a tornado had gone through there. And the hushed whispers in the next room sounded extremely pressing and anxious now that I was close, because though I had tried to tiptoe as silently as possible, my steps had been audible. I realized what was happening and I went ballistic. At that moment, I fucking lost it. My fight or flight instinct kicked in and it kicked fight into maximum overdrive. The words, danger, thieves, fight hit me like a truck and I threw my whole weight on my brother's door, 
busting the door down so furiously you'd think it owed me money. I saw no one in the room, but it was also a fucking mess and I knew what I had heard, so I ran to the balcony door. I ripped the curtain out of my way, and went through the open balcony door just in time to catch one of the thieves right after he jumped off the balcony ledge. Looking back on it, he looked like a normal guy. Black hair, normal height, athletic build, big earring on his left ear. But at the time he looked like a fucking monster to me. A vile, putrid, home invading, piece of shit thief monster. I started screaming unintelligible things as I saw him stumble around, obviously having hurt his legs, before he got back on his feet and ran away. They were gone. I was safe. But then it hit me. Where the fuck was my laptop? I ran into my room and tore the place apart looking for my laptop. It was gone. I started screaming and crying. The unfairness, audacity, and the cowardice hit me like a steel toe to the stomach. I screamed and cried like I was in a Grecian tragedy. I'm not rich by any means, and neither is my family. I had an old laptop, which was probably worth pennies second hand, but I needed that laptop for my schoolwork, and without it, I couldn't finish my semester. Not to mention that I don't have many real-life friends, and the majority of my friends at the time were online, so if I lost that laptop, I lost the two dot my laptop was lost, and so was I. I felt violated, dirty, and less than. I was afraid I'd throw up, or pass out or both. I was taking such rapid and deep panic breaths that my vision began to blur. In the most panicked and grief-stricken state I've ever been in in my life, tears streaming down my face, I called my mother to tell her what had happened, and she told me to call the police. It took me almost a full minute on the phone with the operator telling her again and again where I lived, who I was, and what had happened before she understood me and said she'd send someone over. A few days later I was talking with my mother about the incident and she told me something that hit me hard. I come from a pretty much trilingual household, and she told me that when I called her that night she couldn't make out what language I was speaking because I had been so panicked. Makes sense why I had to repeat myself over and over to the operator. I started running around the house like a lunatic, checking every door and every lock in a frenzy, until I got to the kitchen and saw that the window had been broken. Without thinking, I slammed it shut. Stupid. I know. But I was beside myself. I wasn't thinking straight. My brother came home a few minutes later, and when he came in, he saw me panicking, crying my eyes out, and speaking almost unintelligibly. He came to the bedrooms and he saw the damage, and told me to go sit in the living room and calm down. I did as he said and tried to calm down, but I jumped at every sound, and started crying worse, telling him I was sorry that I got home too late, and that our laptops were gone. The house seemed so big to me at those moments, so dark, and so hostile, and I felt so small and helpless. My brother called me over to my room and showed me a pillowcase full of something, and when we looked inside we found both laptops, all my jewelry, fake, all of it, my old phone, and some other stuff. They had been right in front of me the whole time, but I was so messed up that they didn't even register. The police eventually came about an hour later and did fuck all. So my brother and I took it to the police station and filed a report of the incident, and since I had seen half of one of the culprit's faces, they asked me to come in for an identification. They even sent over someone to dust for prints. Nothing ever came of it. The police said that since they didn't even have a backpack to put the loot in and resorted to using one of our pillowcases, they were almost 100% junkies. We had the outdoor metallic ladder ripped off our kitchen balcony, much to my cat's displeasure, since that's how they got in. We also installed several motion detecting lights. For the next few months I was constantly on edge, and every time I passed near some suspicious characters who hang around near my usual bus stop I felt a violent rage boil in me. I caught myself looking for the man I had seen, ready to beat him within an inch of his life. But I never saw him, or heard his creepy whisper partner again, and my brother and I moved away from that apartment a few months later because I never felt comfortable in that apartment again. I picked up kickboxing and because it has made me stronger, it has helped me feel safer. And I also always carry a knife with me now. I still think back on that encounter and realize how fucking stupid I was. What creeps me out the most is knowing that that night, there had been nothing but a thin plywood door separating me from two potentially dangerous men. Even if I know that me busting in my brother's room like a lunatic is what scared them off because of how stupidly fearless I was, I also realize how bad it could have gone. They could have had guns. They could have had knives. They could have had pepper spray, or a chain, or whatever. And there were two of them and only one of me. And if they ganged up on me, 
even with the adrenaline having turned me into Doom Guy, I don't know how much of a chance I realistically stood against two men, high on whatever they were on, and desperate enough to break into an apartment and stuff loot in a pillowcase. Had they been willing to put up a fight this would have ended very, very bad for me. What I do know is that I probably still would have burst in there like Doom Guy. So, to the creepy, cowardly bastards who dared break into my apartment, and tried to rob me and my brother and ended up traumatizing me so bad I had to move, fuck you both. I hope for your fucking sake we never meet again, because I've been kicking that sandbag for two years now and picturing your face every single time. It all started over a year ago, living in my current small neighborhood. It was unusually hot in our house for October and my sister figured it'd be a good idea to keep her window open for a bit of air. She was doing her homework and I was getting ready for bed when suddenly she burst into my room. She frantically says that she heard some noises outside, sounds of leaves crunching under a person's steps. I believed it to be an animal, so I walked into her room and stayed there for no more than five minutes until I heard leaves crunching. We quickly glance out the window only to hear the sound of something running away in the woods, but that wouldn't be the end of the story. During the winter I enjoy exploring the woods towards the back of my house, climbing trees, and traveling further back to the fields. I remember the events very clearly. It had just snowed that night, the first snowfall of winter and I was more than excited to head out there. I did so and climbed my usual tree to look out. I gave a cursory glance around me and at the ground when I noticed something strange, footsteps leading away from my house. This wouldn't be weird as long as the front of the footsteps didn't end pointing straight at my house and the origin of them came from a seemingly long off start. I tracked them down up to a point where there was a rusty wire fence covered in snow where they disappeared. October 2017, it started up again. I was laying in my bed pitch dark, not a light shining through my room when I heard it, my doorknob turning and my door creaking open. My heart stopped, every single possibility of what it was was rushing through my mind. Keep in mind my door is always shut when I go to sleep. Since I was covered by my blanket I quickly shot my sister a text, did you just come in my room? She replied with a sharp, no, I'm all the way in Hilliard. My heart began pumping fast. I slowly snuck my hand under my pillow and grabbed my baton, sent a text to my dad, and waited. My dad came in mere minutes later with a knife, shot on the lights and I jumped out of bed. Searched the entire house with nothing, alarm set and all doors locked. Impossible, there's no way that happened otherwise, my dad and mom were asleep and a cat would have opened it much faster if it jumped at the doorknob. You best believe I didn't sleep a second that night. Fast forward to December. My relatives in town are staying for a week in the basement. We turned on the alarm and all headed to sleep. I stayed up gaming. In the morning around 2, 30, 3, estimated since I wasn't aware what had transpired, my uncle slowly opened his eyes, with the feeling of being watched. His eyes adjusted a bit to the dark before he saw it. A guy, average height, scrawny, hair flowing in the wind and shivering looking inside their room through the window. My uncle screamed and they grabbed the baby before taking off upstairs. That morning I was informed what happened. I looked for footprints and saw only the smallest sign of a footprint, a front toe print made by what I could only assume was a sneaker. My uncle gave me more details without me telling him I looked for footprints and he said the guy was leaning to the left looking in. The footprint matched his story, the left had a thin line of dirt anyone could have shimmied across. Now that leads to tonight, the night I could swear he or whatever it was had been in our house. I couldn't sleep. Life has been stressful lately and I was up pretty much all night until I tried getting rest. Every night I've had string Christmas lights dimly light the room until tonight. I figured the lights must have been interfering with my sleep, so I unplugged them and headed off to sleep. Pillow over my head I started to drift off until it happened, a quick strum of my guitar and the sound of something falling over with a desperate attempt to stop it from hitting the ground filled the room. This sound ignited my heart rate. Saliva developing at an extreme speed made it hard to not swallow. I could feel the presence of someone in my room. Realizing I left my baton on my desk I did the next logical thing. Pretend I was asleep. I tried and laid there for what felt like hours when in reality it was only a few minutes until I heard a whimper come from my sister's room. Imagining this may be the day everyone in my family was silently murdered but I gathered all the courage I had. I grabbed my phone, turned on the flashlight and grabbed my baton. I busted into my sister's room and screamed H-E-Y, only to see they were unharmed. My sister asked what the hell I was doing and I just stood there, looked into the pitch black of my room and cried. 
I have never in my life felt the overwhelming emotion of believing my family was going to be taken from me until today. I sit here in my chair writing this in hopes to document my experiences and try to come to some logical conclusion. All I can come up with is that there is some guy stalking my family and perhaps sneaking into our rooms at night. If anything else happens, I'll post it to this thread. I'm gonna try to sleep now.